What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It has been a really long time. So long, in fact, that I forgot to record an intro. So this is going to have to do. But this is a look that I did for you guys and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave me some comments if you have any ideas of some videos you'd like for me to do coming up next. First things first, I'm going to put some eyeshadow bases on my eyes. I'm first using a neutral one called Morning Glory from Nabla Cosmetics, and then I'm going to go on top of that with a darker, like a purpley maroon color called Rhea. You'll see that I also applied the neutral color underneath my eyes. That's because I'm going to be doing, obviously, the smoky bit underneath there, so that just helps to lock it in place and keep it from running. Don't want your under eyes looking a little runny and sad, do ya? As you'll see, I'm putting the darker base just on my eyelids because I'm going to be putting darker colors there, so might as well start with a darker base with a beautiful color. After that, I'm going to take the Oiva 227 blending brush, adding a little bit of the Rhea cream shadow to that. I'm going to buff it into the crease, that way I can soften up the edge there and I don't have any harsh lines or anything like that when I go to add eyeshadow or blush or whatever it is I decide to do in the crease. I'm definitely loving the color of this eyeshadow base though. It's a beautiful like a mauvey purple. You could definitely wear it by itself if you wanted to use it as your lid color. These that you see here are the Nabla Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes, the custom palettes that they made for their um, holiday collection called Gold Dust. And now I'm using one of the blushes from that collection called Satellite of Love with a blending brush, putting it right into the crease of my eye. Um, and you can see it's a very dark, like a pinky, reddish kind of color. So that's gonna give me like the background color of my eyeshadow. Obviously as a blush, unless you have a much darker, beautiful, chocolatey color skin tone, this is not gonna be a very natural blush on you. Um, so next I'm using Glasswork Eyeshadow from Nabla Cosmetics. This is just like a really sparkly, like a grayish purple color, so it looks really pretty when you press it on top of that darker purple, the Rhea um, cream shadow, because it just gives you like a really glittery, fun, playful look. And I'm going on top of that with the same eyeshadow, but I wet my brush. I'm using a MAC 239 brush, and I wet it with Fix Plus. I'm going back on top of that just to give it more intensity. For the eyes, I'm going to stop there for now, and I'm going to apply the Bobbi Brown Stick Foundation all over my skin. First, I applied uh, my new favorite spray. It's the Valentia Fresh Calming Toner Mist, so it's really nice to really balance the pH of your skin, but I love how it feels on my skin, and it smells amazing. To blend the Bobbi Brown Stick Foundation, I'm using the Smith's Cosmetics 118 brush. This is actually like a bronzer blush, like a powder brush, but I love the fibers and I love how fluffy it is. It really moves that cream along my face in like a really soft way. You guys know I always use the Beauty Blender for my skin. I'm going to use a Beauty Blender, but just for the concealer. I wanted to do something different using a brush. So I chose one of my favorite Smith brushes to do it. If you guys haven't tried Smith, I highly recommend it. They're amazing quality. Next up is concealer. I'm using the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. My color is NC20. Sometimes I do NC15 if I want it to be a lot brighter, but I wanted to keep it a little bit softer, so I went for NC20. I'm using just a big brush to pop that on and then going in with the Beauty Blender sponge to buff it and press it into my skin. As you see, I'm not dragging it across my face. I'm literally just pressing, pressing, pressing. And that way I'm not going to accentuate, yes, the lines that I have underneath my eyes on the sides. I have some fine lines approaching 30 next year, so you know, starting to show up. So less strokes, more taps is better for the texture. Once you have tapped and smoothed your face to perfection, it's time to give it some dimension back. So now I'm going in with the Iconic London Multi-Use Contour Palette with the Zoeva 127 brush. This is my absolute favorite brush for cheeks these days because of the angle, the fibers, everything. It's perfect for contour, for blush. Absolutely love it. And as you guys saw, the contour palette has three contour colors. So I go in with a mixture of those and pop them onto my cheeks, right underneath the cheekbone, starting in the hairline, creating a C just to get more of a chiseled effect to my face and then I go in with the Beauty Blender without adding any product and I go right along the edges of that to clean it up and make it a little bit more flawless looking if you will then using the same colors just gonna bronze up my forehead a little bit and then 
pick up a little bit of the lighter color, which is what I'm going to do next, and pop it underneath my eyes. Look at this face. I make that face every time I'm doing stuff under my eyes. I can't help it, so get ready for that. But I'm using the Smith Cosmetics 112 brush with the lighter colors, just kind of stippling it underneath my eyes so I can set it a little bit. Now I went on with Harper Blush. This is also from the Gold Dust Collection from Nabla. It's my first time using it, so I was being really careful. You never know what kind of color is going to pop up onto your face when you haven't tried a blush before, so you have to really softly go in the first time. That way you can avoid looking like a crazy person, and then after you know what it's like, you can really buff it onto your skin without fear. Now I'm highlighting using Luna Eyeshadow from Nabla. This is also from the Gold Dust Collection. Do you guys see a theme here? Um, again, the first time using this, so I had to go in and see what it was like, and then I was super impressed. So I'm like, alright, let's put this all over my face. Absolutely love the color. And I'm still using that Smith 112 brush. I absolutely love this brush for basically powdering, like highlighting, because it's a small brush, so you have a lot of control. Now I'm using, oh, here's the face again. Paprika eyeshadow from the Gold Dust Collection. It's a matte orange color and I'm using a really small blending brush. That way I can get it precisely right underneath my eye. But I don't want like a really harsh line so I'm going in with the blending brush, the small one first, and then I'm using a little bit of a larger brush to soften up the edge of that. Now I'm going in with a little bit of the color on the inner part of my eye and along the edge of the the blush, the purple blush that I applied the first. That way I can give it a little bit of like a sunset effect. Now I'm using the cream shadow again, Rhea, with the MAC 239 brush and I'm using it right up against my lash line. This way I'm creating sort of like I used an eyeliner effect, giving it a deeper, darker color, but also since this, um, it's, it's an eyeshadow base so it's not going to move. So I absolutely love doing things underneath my eyes that I know I can trust that aren't going to be creasing and looking gross and moving. So this is a great product for that. Now I'm just adding a bit of black to the waterline. I picked up a Graftopian black pencil. Usually I go in with MAC Feline but I couldn't find it so I just chose another black pencil that I have. You know we all have about a million. And I'm putting this in the waterline and then just a little bit underneath my lash line as well. And now it's time for brows. Going in with what I always use which is Anastasia Beverly Hills Chocolate Dip Brow with Inglot Duraline. First I'm going to brush my eyebrows with the 214 Smith brush. This is my favorite spoolie brush. It's huge. It gets your eyebrows brushed in like two seconds. And then going in with the Anastasia Dip Brow with the Inglot Duraline. The Duraline just basically thins out the product. After you have any gel for a while, it starts to dry out. So the Duraline is going to go in, reactivate it, and really thin it out. That way you have a lot more control. You're not getting too much product in your eyebrows. My eyebrows always end up so thick and so dramatic if I don't use the Duraline. I feel like I forgot I like I forgot how to do eyebrows if I don't put it. I'm like, dang, I'm totally failing on the brow game today. So put in the Inglot Duraline, just one drop as you guys saw, and I'm going to work directly from where I added that drop. That way I can sculpt out my brows. And what I do, as you guys can see, I start first sculpting the bottom of the brow and then just lightly go up filling in through the rest, trying to make them look even, but they're not, so you can't really do that. Don't get too discouraged if your eyebrows aren't exactly the same because they never freaking are, so whatever, don't, don't stress it. Now once you're finally finished filling in your brows and sculpting them, it's time to brush them again just to work all that product through the brows. And then I'm going to use a clear brow set. I use the NYX, the Control Freak. It's just clear, like a clear mascara. Brush it first through the brows the opposite way the hair grows and then brush them back the way the hair grows yeah, naturally. Yeah. So that way it holds extra well and you don't have to worry about any hairs going wild after you've spent all this time making your eyebrows look fabulous. Now going in with just a little bit of mineralized skin finish just to finish off the skin mineralizing. And once I've done that, I'm going to start my eyeliner. I'm using the Girlactic Precise Eyeliner Marker. This is the first time I tried using it, and actually I struggle hardcore doing wing liner, I, on myself at least. I'm pretty good at other people's, but my own, I don't know if it's like the shape of my eyes or how my eye lid droops down a little bit. I'm not sure what it is, but I always have done other people's eyeliner better than my own. So this actually, the pen made it pretty easy for me to get a really nice clean line, especially on the wing part. You'll see me going back and forth about a million times trying to make it look even and you know how that goes like you want to say okay I'm, today I'm going to do like a really nice thin line and then you end up covering your whole entire eyelid with black so I didn't do that today luckily but uh, you will see me going back and forth a few times to perfect the line that I ended up making maybe not so smooth or not so precise so it's normal don't stress it. 
How I actually achieve my wing liner, you'll see here, is I first start by drawing a straight line coming out as if I'm extending my lower lash line, and then I just make it go meet up with the rest of the eyeliner that I already created on my eyelid. I find that this is the easiest way to make sure that the liner actually complements your eye shape because you're following your eye shape, and also it's easier to get it even since you're doing the same thing on both sides. If I don't do this, I feel like I can never get the line straight or even, like one's going up, one's going down. You look sad on one side and super excited on the other, like fierce on one side and like a little bit like you need help on the other side. So like I said, I always just follow that lower lash line. On clients, I do the same thing and I feel like it gets the perfect line every time. So I've moved on now to my lower lash line again. I'm using the Girlactic Mechanical Pencil and I'm actually not really doing it in the waterline, I'm doing it right below. And as you see here, I'm smudging it now with a MAC 213 brush. That mechanical pencil is perfect for this step because it's actually a really fat, flat pencil. So it goes on really smoothly and gives you a lot of product right away. Now I'm using the blush again, Satellite of Love, which is that purpley blush that I started with on the 213 brush and I'm putting it on top of that pencil that I just added. This is going to make the pencil a little bit more subtle but also make it blend in with the rest of the eyeshadow colors and everything that I already created. Now onto my secret cheap mascara, not so secret since I told you guys but it's awesome. It's usually like two dollars in the United States, I know it's around like two or three pounds in the UK and it's really nice because it gives you really nice dramatic lashes right away. And of course, you don't have to work too hard on your mascara, for me at least, because I always wear false lashes if I do a full eye look. But as you can see, I basically just hold on to the outer tip of the lash and place it on to my eyelid, starting from the outside, working my way in, and just pinching the lash onto my lash line. This, I find, is the easiest way. Obviously, you have your eyes open, you can see what you're doing, and you're just placing it right on top of the lash line. For me, it's the most comfortable way to apply the lashes. I can't use tweezers or lash applicators or anything like that. Like I've tried to and I see other people do it and it looks so easy, but I just can't. So I'm feeling myself with the lashes, doing some slow-mos, opening my eyes, you know, trying to look cute for you guys. Now on to the lips. This I've talked about on my Snapchat a lot. This is the Kiss Me Honey Exfoliating Lip Polish. It's basically like a cane sugar organic scrub that you can use to exfoliate your lips before doing any lip products. It's very hydrating and it's very smoothing and I love it and I use it all the time. Next, I'm using the Mabel and Meg. This is the Lumic Lumelixir Serum. I can never say it. And I'm using this to go back and rehydrate a little bit more intensively after I've used that scrub. The scrub does have shea butter in it, but this just helps to smooth my lips and give it a little bit more of a boost of hydration. Before um, going and applying, I'm going to do a liquid lipstick. So I always find that those are a little bit more on the drying side, so I think any hydration you can put on your lips that's not going to affect the texture is really good. So as I said, I'm using a liquid lipstick. This is Gerard Cosmetics Hydra Matte Lipstick and the color is 1994. I'm not going to use lip pencil, which I always, 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 always use lip pencils, but I find that sometimes with liquid lipsticks, if they have the right applicator, it's not necessary. So that's one thing I really like about these is they have a nice precise applicator so you can go and get a nice crisp line and a beautiful shape. You can even overdraw your lips, which I did here as always. And you don't have to compromise the color by using a pencil. Um, also, this is a really comfortable formula. It's called Hydra Matte. I was hoping it was going to be semi-hydrating and matte, and it is. I had it on all day long and it wasn't drying, probably because I prepped my lips so well, but that's it. So there you have it. That's the look for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something as I said before. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and comment in the section if you have any questions or if you have any comments maybe about what you'd like to see me doing next. I would be happy to do that for you guys if you just let me know. We'll see you later. I hope you enjoyed.